and a closing prayer. Father God, we want to give thanks to you for this afternoon. We thank you for bringing us safely to this place of worship. We want to thank you for your faithfulness, for your protections and providence. Lord, you are the one who sustains us. Lord, we want to thank you for answering to our prayer. We want to thank you for protecting our country and leading us and giving guidance to our leaders as we move into a phase three. Lord, we pray that you will continue to lead our leaders and those relevant authorities and help our nations to work together in concerted efforts to bet in the battle of this COVID virus. Lord, we give you thanks. And Lord, we want to give thanks to you for the annual conference, for the successful com completion of the annual conference. We want to give glory to your name. And Lord, we want to give, continue to pray for the coming general uh, conference sessions in December. We commit and look unto you. And Lord, you will continue to lead and guide uh, the leaders as you can you establish your kingdom and bless the church so that we continue to be a blessing to our community, to the nations, and bring glory to your name and see that your kingdom, the advancements in your kingdom. So for that, we give you thanks, Lord. And Lord, as we enter into this hour of transformations, we pray that your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may I invite all of you to stand for call to worship. I lift up my eyes to you, to you who sit enthroned in heaven. the eyes of a female slave look to the hand of a mistress so our eye look to you Lord our God till he shows us his mercy have mercy on us Lord have mercy on us for we have endured no end of contempt we have endured no end of ridicule from the arrogant of contempt from the proud now may I invite Pastor Simon to lead us in pastoral prayer Please be seated as we pray. As we come into God's house, we will not be able to worship with our voices, but let's join our hearts as we pray. Let's begin by praying for ourselves, that as we gather physically, it's not just about our interaction with one another, but first of all, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice before the Lord to worship Him in person. Our coming here speaks to God that we honour Him, we love Him, and we make time to be here to worship Him. And so God, as our brothers and sisters, as Changi Methodist Church come together to worship You physically, we want to praise You. We want to lift up Your name with everything that we do. We want to worship You. We pray that even as we come as a body, Lord, that you will be glorified. That, Lord, this time of worship is not about us or what we get out of this gathering, but it's about you and what you get out of our worship, what you get out of our obedience, what you get out of our faithfulness to you. So, Lord, be pleased with our worship as we come together as one body, Lord, to worship you and to bless your holy name. Father, we want to continue to pray also for uh, our churches who have uh, the CAC churches who have just completed the annual conference. We thank God for the new appointments, the new pastoral appointments. We pray that, Lord, in the days to come, you will help all the 17 churches to be rooted and established in you. We pray that together with the, the team of leadership, that they will be able to build the churches God, that there may be some changes, but we know that in your hands, Lord, you are sovereign. And that, Lord, you are able to work wonders. So we ask for your grace and mercy upon our 17 churches. That, Lord, you will continue to, to lead us and guide us in the days ahead. 
As a body, we also pray for the world and we see that the pandemic is not slowing down in many parts of the world, that the third and the fourth wave seem to be coming up. And so, Father, we pray in the midst of all that, we pray for your hand of mercy to be upon nations. We pray for your healing upon those who are sick. We pray for the development of vaccines so that, Lord, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. But most of all, we pray for those who are suffering, whether from a loss of jobs, employment, the loss of family members. Lord, we pray that you will continue to comfort them, assure them that you are with them, that in spite of the challenges and the tribulations that we may face in these times, you are still God and you are still with us. Help us, Lord, to experience your presence and know that you are a faithful God. Comfort your people, we pray. For all these things we pray and we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so church, we welcome you to a time of worship. And uh, next slide. Next slide. So first of all, uh, the annual conference just completed this week. And uh, I was very pleased to... Uh, Announce to you our newly minted uh, deacon, Reverend Patrick Lim. Can you please stand? And uh, so, Patrick is one of our seven deacons. Uh, we had seven deacons at uh, this annual conference this last week who became who were ordained. And uh, we thank God uh, for Pastor Patrick who has been with us. Uh, sad to say, Pastor Patrick also has been appointed to Tolo IA Methodist Church. Uh, for next year, he'll be with us until end of December, then January he will go. So we can still continue to show your appreciation and uh, encourage him uh, before January comes. Alright, next slide. Next Sunday is Outreach Sunday. I hope you remember that we are in a season of being released. I hope you remember last Sunday's sermon where we talk about being released to the marketplace. I hope that you had a divine encounter sometime during the week. How many of you had a divine encounter? You met someone, you were able to encourage someone, you had a good conversation with someone. Anyone? Okay, continue to pray that you will have. Okay, Holy Spirit can lead us. And let's invite somebody for our outreach Sunday. Alright, let's invite someone on Zoom so that they can hear the gospel. You know, my, uh, the testimony that uh, Michelle last week shared, she didn't share one testimony. I think she shared one testimony about an auntie that she had who was very opposed to Christianity but now start to attend uh, her church. It's my auntie also, the same auntie, you know, and uh, I'll never imagine her going to church. But today she's attending and because of Zoom, it's easier. So let's be available to be used by the Lord to invite different ones. We try to get good speakers so that they can minister the gospel. Uh, Zoom is an easy platform. Let's share the link. And Dr. Liao is coming next week to share the gospel and also to minister to us. So um, let's be prepared to worship God again. It's not Saturday, but next week is Sunday. Okay, the Saturdays for this uh, December and November and December is only for the Holy Communion. Okay? Next week's duty personnel, please take, have a look. All right, thank you for serving. Next slide. Holy Communion. So today is the November Holy Communion. The next Holy Communion we're gathering here again is on 5th of December. It's also a Saturday. We want to get used to our Saturday schedule as we build up for 2021. Okay, 2021 onwards, it will be Saturday service for us. So this is like a warm-up. Okay, our next service is on 5th December. For those of you who have yet to sign up, I encourage you to point your phones now at the QR code. And uh, if you have not done it, please do it. We'll give you next 10 seconds to do it. Go ahead. All right, book your tickets for the event bright. Next slide. So this is the MCS 135 Youth Celebration. Mark down the dates and uh, prepare to sign up and we'll join with the rest of the three conferences to celebrate uh, what God has been doing in our Methodist Church as young people. Next slide. 
FYP. All right, FYP is happening. It's called finding your place, not finding your partner, but you can also find your partner sometimes. You know, so uh, it's a good program uh, and uh, it helps young people who have a gap year to really find their place in God. This is not meant for people who want to go full time. It's meant for people who are going to be in the marketplace. And so we have a lot of marketplace speakers that we connect you to to hear about how Christians do business, how Christians become bankers, how Christians, you know, uh, do entrepreneurship. And, uh, and so on. So they, we have uh, a lot of good speakers and there's also some Christian uh, discipleship content and we want to encourage those of you who can make time to be part of this. At this time, we want to have our tithes, we want to collect our tithes and offering as a worship to God. So I encourage you, uh, we are only having e-offering, uh, so I encourage you now to take out your phones and uh, let's have a, a few minutes of giving an offering to the Lord. Okay, shall we stand for the doxology? Okay, we do not sing, but let's uh, mint it as a prayer to our hearts as the music leads us. Praise God. Please be seated. I backtrack to one announcement. And uh, to the we have uh, this cookbook, uh, the recipe book for from the WSCS. Uh, we have six copies left, one Chinese and five English. We hope that uh, 
uh, we need to clear this uh, by the end of this month, which is the next one or two days. So we encourage you all to buy the books so that we can clear it today. And then, uh, um, so you can buy it as a gift, a Christmas present for someone. All right, even though you may already have a copy, we encourage you to help us clear it and so that uh, yeah, we will be able to pass the money back to WSCS. So uh, you can see June after the service. All right, thank you. Now we're going to have a scripture reading for today. Pastor Patrick will be sharing the word. The passage is taken from Colossians 3, verses 12 to 17, and I'll read the scriptures. Verse 12, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. As members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I thank God for giving me this opportunity to share with you once again His Word. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank You for this afternoon. And we thank You for Your written Word that we have just read. May Your Holy Spirit speak Your living Word into our hearts and minds as I share some reflections from this Scripture passage. Thank You, Lord. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Now, a few years ago, there was this incident which I think some of you can still remember. Now, it was a pushing incident that took place at the hawker center, which involved a couple and an old man. Now, the incident was captured in video and shared uh, by Facebook. And some netizens identified the couple in the video as employees of a particular bank in the, er in the nearby area. Now, and then the bank immediately, while doing their own investigation, they want to verify the identity, the information, whether it's accurate, they responded that they would not condone such shameful and deplorable behavior for it does not reflect the company's value or the standards that they expect of all their employees. Now this afternoon as we come to the final of our pulpit series on release to the marketplace, regardless of your professions, Regardless of your occupations, whether you are a student or even homemaker, Paul reminds us, as followers of Jesus Christ, there is a Christian uniform that you must always put on. After telling his readers what they need to take off, Paul tells them what proper moral and spiritual clothes are fitting for Christians to put on. He calls the Colossians Christians and each of us to put on the virtues appropriate for followers of Jesus Christ. He calls us to put on attitudes, the right attitudes, and follow the right courses of actions 
that will affect our relationships with those around us. And each of these virtues mentions as essentials of the Christian's uniform will either eliminate or reduce friction in our personal relationships. And those who wear these garments will not be abrasive, will not be difficult, will not be unpleasant or unlovely people. My wife just borrowed a book from National Library, How to Handle Difficult People. Right? And I remember during uh, my service, uh, I mean, as a civil servant, I also attended courses similar how to, how to deal with difficult bosses. Now, each portion of Christian's uniform must be put on internally, in our mind and in our heart. So this, this afternoon, I'd like to share the seven points, the seven essentials of these uniforms. What are they? The first one, chapter 3, verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, these are all characters of Christ. Now, as I was preparing this passage, one thought came to me. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't this passage is talking to the church, to the brothers and sisters in Christ, how they're going to be, how they should behave in the church? True? Yes. But again, the truth is, it is easy for us to love one another in the church. But many a time for us, when we go to the marketplace, we find it very different. Or we could be entirely different person. And so today, this passage not only speaks to us how we ought to behave in the church, but also outside church, in the marketplace. And so this is a verbal picture of the character of Jesus Christ that Paul is, trying to, is proclaiming to us and he presents to us for our admirations and imitation. We know it's difficult. It's not easy. But remember, these gracious attitudes and actions are made possible by the presence of the Holy Spirit within us as He seeks to produce in us the mind and personality of Jesus Christ. Amen? Second essential that is put on the example of Christ. Verse 13, put on the example of Christ. What exactly this example we are looking at, we are talking about? Now, there are many unpleasant things with which we must somehow learn to cope if we want to enjoy peace and serve God effectively. Not everyone will treat us kindly, sometimes even church. And very often, outside church, in the marketplace, when people know that you are Christians, they may try to discriminate, intimidate you. So we must learn to cope with those who make, the, make life difficult or painful for us. We look at the example of Jesus. He handled unkindness, not by developing an attitude of hostility, and resorting to unkindness, but, but by the practice of granting forgiveness to them. So this is the example. The motive of practicing forgiveness is the example of Jesus Christ. And so this is the essentials that we have to put on us. We are to let Christ be our pattern we are to imitate Him, and we are to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. 
And the third point, that is to put on the love of Christ. Verse 14. The love of Christ must not be identified with what we often call love today. It is not identified with shallow, shoddy, cheap, emotional thing that we call love today. Christ's love is a self-sacrificial love. He expresses his love in terms of kindness, thoughtfulness, helpfulness. And when on earth, he practiced a persistent, unbreakable goodwill, even towards those who intend or plan to crucify him. And so with the help of the Holy Spirit today, if we are indeed the children of God, we are indeed, we have professed that we believe, we trust in the Christ, in Christ. We are children of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. We too can love in this manner. Amen? Now the fourth point, that is to put on the peace, peace of Christ. Verse 15. The peace of Christ is not merely the absence of war or tension. Jesus seeks to bring peace into a right relationship with God, with others, and within themselves. In putting on the peace of Christ, we seek persistently to establish and maintain a harmonious relationship with others. And this is what we can do in the marketplace. Whether in church or home, we should be the peacemaker. Right? My personal experience in, uh, in my workplace, every time when I heard of some uh, this uh, unhappiness among the fellow workers, I pray for wisdom and I try to spend time, we can try to spend time with them to understand what was the problem. And sometimes we can even be a bridge between them and the bosses to clarify some misunderstanding. All right? Something that we can do. And then the fifth, number five, the fifth thing is the fifth essentials that is to put on the word of Christ. In verse 16, we are encouraged to let the words of Jesus Christ dwell in us. I think if we, we are aware to do this, we must read his word, read the Bible, and meditate on and memorize the word. Here I want to caution fellow brothers and sisters. Nowadays, everything we want like instant noodles, all right? Many a time we read the word of God simply by receiving some images and then from there we just treat it as that is the word of God. But please, my advice is we go back to the Bible, all right? We go back to the Bible, we study the word of God and may the spirit of truth lead us and give us understanding. And we should recognize the truth that Jesus spoke as being absolute truth for governing our life. And so, putting on the words of Christ, we should respond to his teaching and guidance in our daily lives, daily activities, whether at home or in our marketplace. Remember Jesus overcame, how he overcame temptations? That is through the power of the word of God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so if we will live the abundant life, we must plant his words in our inner being and let them bear heavenly fruit. The second last point is to put on the thankfulness of Christ. Verse 15 to 17. 
we see three times in these short verses, Paul emphasized the importance of being grateful and giving the expressions to that attitude of gratitude. Christ gave thanks in many occasions. Thankfulness for us today is something that we need to cultivate and practice. This is one of the traits of a true follower of Jesus Christ. And it is to be practiced every day. We need to learn to count the blessing of God. As what else in Paul's letters, he said, give thanks in all circumstances. God is above. He is watching us. The most we can see is the horizon, but we do not know what is God's plans high above. He has been leading us. He knows where we are going, and he will continue to lead us in righteous path to the glory of his name. And so we need to trust not only God's power, God's strength, God's providence, we need to trust his wisdom. All right? We need to trust his wisdom. And so this is the basis that we can give thanks to God. We can count his blessing. We know that he continues to lead us. He's far beyond uh, what we can see. So we just trust in him. Trust his wisdom. And give thanks. In, learn to give thanks in every circumstances. And the last point I want to make is to put on the name of Christ. Verse 17. Now what does it mean here? To put on the name of Christ. To be baptized into the name of Christ is to acknowledge his ownership and to respond to his authority. And so we are to do all that we do as if we are in his presence and as a service for him. Let me repeat. We are to do all that we do as if we are, just like right now, we are in his presence and as a service for him. So these, are, these seven are the essentials of the uniform of a christian uniform so every day be mindful even though your workplace you are not required to wear uniform for the teachers huh? we need to wear our uniform christian uniform all right and so today as we come for holy communion service once again before we partake in this sacrament, let us be, let us remember what our Lord Jesus has set for us to follow. His example, his humble example. All right? Putting off the uniform of the old life calls for a continual forsaking of the sins that so easily beset us. We will find it necessary to give attention to this as long as we live. So to put, to put on the new uniform of a Christian, remember, this is a glorious authority and glorious opportunity. And this is a necessary it's a continuous necessity. Because we receive a new nature when we are born again, and because the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us, it is possible for each of us to wear the new uniform. We thank God for that. Amen? It is absolutely essential if we are to be true to our Lord and a blessing to those around us in the marketplace. Amen.
thank God for the word that has been preached. I like the last point. It says, put on the name of Christ. It's not just a uniform we wear, but it is an identity of who we are. Just like each one of you have a surname, and it tells you that you belong to that family. And because of that identity you have, you do what you do. And so, friends, we remember that we put on Christ, the name of Christ. We are Christians. And we do all these things not because of rules that our parents tell us, but because we want to represent Christ wherever we are. So let's take a moment now to pray and to respond to the word that has been preached. Will you just bow your heads for a moment and ask the Lord, say, God, I want to put on your name first my identity as your child and then help me then to put on love, put on thankfulness, put on the peace. So many things that I can put on. Lord, help me to first get it into my system that I am your child. My identity is in you. I am a Christian. So Holy Spirit, would you just speak to us even as your word has gone forth that Lord, today we will truly once again be reminded of who we are in Christ as we are challenged to put on the uniform of Christ from Colossians. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so the service is over for the online viewers. For the rest of us here, we will continue with our Holy Communion service. And uh, at this point, uh, I will invite you to stand as we uh, recite the Apostles' Creed together. And as Christians, as men and women who put on Christ, the Creed reminds us of what we believe and who we believe in. And so as one people, let's read the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We will now proceed with our Holy Communion, so please remain standing. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. And would you take a moment now, brothers and sisters, to spend a moment of quietness to confess your sins before the Lord. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now let's turn around. We cannot walk, but let's turn around to one another to offer God's peace to each other, to say God's peace be with you because we are all forgiven by God. It's good to see you and may God's peace be with you. Let us continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You form us in your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turn away and our love fail, your love remains steadfast. You deliver us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who look for the day where justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, where nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed, anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that a time had come where you, you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my body. This is the blood of my new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith together. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Hallelujah. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. May they be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By the Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And so now as children of God, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Amen. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we partake of that one loaf. The bread in which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And now we want to take instructions from our ashes. Lalita will be guiding us row by row. So please form up in this middle aisle and maintain your safety distance. Return to your seats and we will partake together when everyone has received and hold on to your containers. We will dispose them on the way out. That's a reminder for you. We invite all who are baptized to come. Any more you have not received? When you're ready, you can peel off the first layer to get the bread. And then let's uh, stand and partake, and ready to partake the mm. communion together. Church, the body of Christ broken for us. Let's partake together. Church, the blood of Christ shed for us. Let's partake together. Let us pray the prayer of thanksgiving together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery 
in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so church, before we dismiss, we also want to take time to thank God for all those who have put in their efforts to serve us. Even though this is a simple setup, it takes time. We thank God for our ushers. We thank God for our AV team. We thank God for our staff team who put together. So let's be grateful with a heart of thanksgiving to say this is really God's house. We are God's people and together we want to worship God. So let's close in prayer. Our Lord Jesus, thank you for everyone here that in this simple yet profound way as we gather together, as we partake your communion, Lord, we know that you are with us. And we live in a world where there's so much chaos, so much anxiety, so much fear. We know that as we gather, you are with us and we have your shalom, your peace. And so church, go forth in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, please remember not to mingle. This is the way out. All right. There's a dustbin there. You can dispose of the thing. And then, um, yeah. God bless you. And I will see you in person on 5th December. All right. Please remember the mingling. Let's not mingle. Keep your distance. Okay, and then you can talk more when you leave the church. The Lord bless you. Remember to buy the cookbooks huh, for Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>